Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Apostate Vic. So I've been thinking about what happened between my mom and I and I decided that I want to do a video and tell everyone what happened. Now before I read what I said to her and before what she said back to me, I need to give you the basis on why my mom and I haven't spoken to each other for more than four and a half years. Now, you know, next month in October of year 2019, I'll be reaching my 15th year since I left the Watchtower organization. Now, for more than a decade, my mom, my Jehovah's Witness mom, and I had an on and off relationship. There were times when everything was peachy king. We would have lunches together, dinners together, we'll go shopping at Walmart, we're shopping at Target, we'll go to the bank. And suddenly, when I would see something ridiculous that the Watchtower just posted, I, of course, would respond and do either a YouTube video or I would say something on my social media of Facebook. And when I would do that, my mom would see that and she would read it and she would respond back to me and she would text me telling me, Vic, you know what? I saw what you said on social media about the Watchtower, what you know they like to say Jehovah's Organization when it's actually the Watchtower's Organization. And my mom would confront me and saying, I saw what you said about the Watchtower's organization and you just can't leave that religion alone. So I'm cutting you off. So she would cut me off for six months, four months, eight months, nine months, ten months, sometimes over a year. But sooner or later, she comes right back like peas and carrots again. She'll text me, she'll call me, we start going back to lunches, we go shopping at the Walmart, we go to Target, I go to the bank, she even took me to work one day. And it went on, and I just couldn't handle it anymore. And yes, I'm gonna make this very clear. She also would continue to come visit me despite after I disassociated myself from the Watch Towers organization, she continued to come visit me, act like pe peas and carrots again. And she actually, to this day, in 2019, she continued to tell me that it's Jehovah's Witnesses' choice if they want to associate with someone who's disfellowshipped or disassociated. Which I know, that's a lie. But of course, I'm not going to go into that. So what I want to say, in 2015, that I got to the point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. The stress and yes, the emotional abuse of her constantly trying to defend the Watchtower's organization and her shunning me, not shunning me, shunning me, not shunning me, shunning me, not shunning me. So in 2015, I just cut her off. I said, I'm done. And I remember right after I made that decision of cutting her off, of course, she started texting me, leaving voicemails, telling me that, is everything all right, Vic? And of course, I didn't respond to her. And I remember finally, it got to the point where she finally left a voicemail and she's like, well, Vic, I guess you don't want to speak to your mother anymore. So, enjoy your life and goodbye. She just kind of dismissed me too. 
whatever. So I went on with my life. Now over that four and a half plus years, there were many times where I really wanted, I was tempted so many times to text her, just say, hey, how you doing? Let her know how my life has been and how my church is doing and just be really nice and tell her I love you and miss you. But each time I had that urge, I just said, you know what, no, I don't wanna do it because I, my phone keeps t tipping over. No, I don't wanna do it because I, I just know her all too well. She's gonna try to defend the Watchtower again. So I just didn't do it. Again, for over four and a half years. Until finally, about two weeks ago, I found out that my grandfather on my dad's side passed away. So I went to the funeral slash memorial at the Kingdom Hall. Now, I didn't know how my relatives were gonna react towards me. Are they gonna be cold-hearted? Are they gonna be loving? Would some of them be loving and some of them cold-hearted? I didn't know. But I took a gandle and I w went. It was gonna be in the Kingdom Hall. And s shockingly, and actually, it's, I'm not gonna use shocking. I'm gonna say, I will say that it went so well. Every single relative on my dad's side showed so much love to me. And there were those who are still Jehovah's Witnesses. There were those who are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. And then those who are never were Jehovah's Witnesses. All of them, including my dad, who's an elder, my stepmom, Ginger, and surprisingly, my little brother, Benjamin. Yeah, he's 37. He's not that little, but he's little to me. I'm in the 40s. So when it was all end, it was over and we left the Kingdom Hall, I was in a good mood. I was so happy how great everyone went. I got a picture of my little brother and I, a picture of my dad and I. Everything went so well. I went home, took that four hour trip back to Phoenix, went to my favorite burger joint, which is real close to where I live at, and they're expensive, they have the best onion rings. And I wanna say, when I was at that Kingdom Mall and I was talking to my brother, I did ask, so Ben, how's mom doing? And my brother said, yeah, she's doing really well, Vic. Yeah, she really likes it living in Colorado. And I asked, I asked him about her working part-time because it said in her Facebook. And he said, yeah, she's only working part-time, only 10 hours a week. Yeah, she, and I asked about her arthritis because she has rheumatoid arthritis. And he, my brother's like, yeah, she gets those flare-ups sometimes. Other times she's fine. So I finally told my brother, you know what? You Ben, I haven't talked to her for a while. Maybe later today or tomorrow or I'll, I'll contact her through a Facebook Messenger to see how she's doing. And my brother said, yeah, that'd be really cool. She'll be really happy to hear about you. So I was like, cool. So when it was all over, I went home, had my, fav my favorite burger. When I got home, later that same night, I decided I was going to text her through Facebook Messenger. And what I'm going to do... I'm gonna read what I said, and then I'm gonna read her response. And let me tell you this, my letter to her is somewhat lengthy, but oh my God, her letter is once upon a time in a far, far land. And her letter goes on and on and on. And let me tell you, when you get to her letter, the first little small paragraph, it sounds real sweet and loving, but oh, she changes. Wow, she changes. And I will tell you, when you hear her letter, you will realize she didn't change not one bit. She's actually more bitter than she was before. So why don't you all sit back, relax, have some butter popcorn and some soda and some beer. You know what, because I think after you hear this, you're gonna need a lot more than just beer. You're gonna need tequila, multiple shots of tequila. And I'm being serious. So now let me start what I said to her. So I responded to her at 8.35 p.m. on August the 24th, 2019. And this is what I said. 
Hi, Mom. I'm sure Ben told you that him and I both were at Grandpa's memorial service today. The service was real nice, and I understand that you're working part-time. I think he said 10 hours per week. Are you still able to drive buses? I'm, of course, a city bus driver now. Looking forward when I reach the top pay of $29.20 an hour. I drive the McDowell, Thomas, Indian School, Van Buren weekly, along with 59th Avenue, 67th Avenue, and 75th Avenue. Every day's different. I'm also almost reaching my 10th year at my church that I go to. It's such an awesome church. They have the most amazing live praise team where all is welcome. Many of the church friends all would love to meet you if you ever come to my church to visit. You would love Reverend Patrick. He's so friendly and very outgoing. He went to seminary school over 40 years ago as he's very knowledgeable. Well, I hope everything is going good. I'm going to send a couple pics that I took at the funeral. I love you and always know that Jesus loves you. And if you ever need to talk about anything, I promise I won't post it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Remember, God is love. Take care. And if you ever come down to Phoenix and you have nothing to do, you'll always welcome to tag along on my bus. Then I sent her a picture of me and my brother, me and my dad, the flowers that she sent, and then I show, showed her the, the memorial paper that was posted about my grandfather's death. Then I sent a picture of me with my new glasses, even a picture of my mom and my dad when they got married back in December the 10th, 1974. Then I showed her my brand new 2019 Hyundai Elantra. Then I showed her one of my articulated 65 foot buses. Then lastly, I showed her like a two minute or minute and a half video of, of our praise team at my church. <coughs> then I said to her, here's a video of my church where we were singing praises to the Lord. It's like this every Sunday. Now we come to her very, and I mean very long letter she sends me. Now I'm going to read this very carefully. I'm not going to read fast because you need to visualize on what she says to me. And like I said, in the very beginning, it sounds sweet and loving, but oh no, she changes very rapidly. So sit down and relax. Let me begin. Thank you for all the pictures. I'm glad you are doing well and are so happy. Your car is very nice. I'm really sorry about your grandfather. Your job sounds great. Boy, that's a big bus. I took early retirement and now I drive a route part-time and do some charter trips. We really love living in Colorado. We have many wonderful friends at the Kingdom Hall, and it's great being close to Lara and the family. 
Vic, I'm only going to say this once. I will never come to your church. I will never meet your friends. I'm glad you have found a church that you really like. I am and always will be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I am happy with it. And I have no desire to leave. Contrary to what you think, the Watchtower and JW Org does not control me. I totally and completely believe we have the truth. Everything you talk about with your church is great. The Bible very clearly tells us what God accepts and what he does not. We don't get to pick and choose with choices we make in life there are consequences some good and some bad that being said we are all adults and we get to live our lives how we choose we were created free moral agents the Bible is full of examples of those that choose to serve God and those that don't. The Israelites are a perfect example. Over and over, they disobeyed and worshipped false gods. God did not show grace towards them. He destroyed many. That being said, I'm really glad you're happy. I have nothing more than my oldest son that I love very much to be happy. I sincerely mean that. I have never attacked your life and your beliefs like you attacked mine. Stop telling people that I want to leave the truth. Stop saying that I'm going to get disfellowshipped because I'm talk to you. That simply is not true. I made that decision not to speak to you because you are so hateful towards our family and my beliefs. You say you love me, but you show complete disrespect for me as a person and as your mother. This is completely contrary to the Bible. Your actions, your Facebook posts, your videos says it all. You find it so funny to do cart crashes on peaceful Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm ashamed of you as a human being. I taught you to be kind and respectful to everyone, even those that don't share your beliefs. I have never spoke badly about your being gay. I don't agree with the lifestyle, but I totally believe you have the right to live your life your way. To tell everyone that I cut you off because you're gay, that's not true. I cut you off because I was tired of your preaching about love of Jesus, but inside you're mean and hateful. Please, Practice what you preach. Please don't respond by trying to quote the Bible to me. I won't believe what I don't believe what you do and I never will. 
I can't make it any more clear. So Vic, please live your life and be happy. Please be kind to people, even Jehovah's Witnesses. I love you very much. So I'm going to make some comments about what she said. Number one. She tries to justify, once again, that she shuns me. Wrong, Mommy Dearest. I shunned you. You know, back in 2015, over four and a half years ago, I got tired of you shunning me, not shunning me, shunning me, not shunning me shunning me, not shunning me. And the only reasons why you shun me is because I was going or talking bad about the watchtower. Don't try to tell me I talk bad about God. Don't you even dare you tell me I talk bad about Jesus. And most importantly, don't you even try to dare and say I talk bad about the Bible. And you, know, you want to talk about the Bible? You know what? Technically, I'm not saying this to you. I know it'll get back to you and you're going to listen to this. So I am going to quote some scriptures in the Bible. You know what? You Jehovah's Witnesses, you obsess yourselves saying that all your teachings is based upon the Bible. Well, let's go to the Bible, shall we? Hmm. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5 and 6. I don't need to read it, read it even or look it up. I know it by heart. The Bible says that there is one God, one mediator between men, Christ Jesus. And you cannot, I'll repeat, you cannot go to God until you go through Jesus. So what does the Watchtower Organization say about as Jesus as their mediator does does the Bible say that Jesus the mediator to only 144,000 because the 1979 April the 1st watchtower it clearly states that Jesus is the mediator to the only 144,000 not to all mankind and you know what that scripture I forgot to mention in 1st Timothy it says Jesus is the mediator to all not Jehovah's Witnesses only not only Mormons not only heterosexuals or bisexuals or Mexicans or ugly Chinese young or old fat or skinny it says 1st Timothy 2 5 and 6 that he is the mediator to all mankind. But does your Jehovah's Witnesses believe that? No. Look in your insight of the scriptures book. You know you Jehovah's Witnesses use that. It clearly states that Jesus is only the mediator to the 144,000. Hmm. Let's go to another scripture. Philippians 2, verse 5, Mommy Dearest. That Bible clearly states, and I quote, And in Jesus' commands that everyone must bow down to those up in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the ground. But Jehovah's Witnesses, Mommy Dearest, Daddy Dearest, are you Jehovah's Witnesses allowed to worship Jesus? No! You call that... What I'm trying to say, sorry. I lost my thought. But Jehovah's Witnesses, since 1954, that's 65 years ago, you could no longer worship Jesus. So before 1965, Jehovah's Witnesses taught that you can't get to the Father until you get to Jesus to worship. But after 65, you can no longer. 
worship Jesus. Again, Philippians 2, verse 10. And Jesus commands that everyone must bow down to those up in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the ground. But Jehovah's Witnesses, Mommy Dearest, can you follow what the Bible says? No. You have to follow what the Watchtower says. But I'm not done yet. My One of my two favorites, John 3, verse 3. Look it up, Mommy Dearest. Look it up, Jehovah's Witnesses. It clearly states in your own Bible that you cannot be in the kingdom of God unless you are a born-again Christian. Mom, are you a born-again Christian? Jehovah's Witnesses, are you born-again Christian? And the answer to you is no. So how are you going to be in the kingdom of God because you're not a born-again Christian? Oh, and of course, I love John 6, verse, starting in verse 52. It speaks very clearly that everyone who believes in the Lord, which is Jesus, not Yahweh, what they like to call Jehovah, but everyone must partake. Of the blood and the body of Christ, you know the 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 wine and crackers. There is absolutely, positively, not one scripture from Genesis to Revelation that says pass the wine and crackers. No, it says that you must partake regularly of the blood and the body of Christ. Now, go to you. Go to my mom, ask her, Tina, have you ever in all your life, in 62 years, have you ever even once partook of the blood and the body of Christ, the wine and crackers? And she'll be very proudly and say, no, I've never did. I've always passed it. So why do you not partake in the blood and the body of Christ like the Bible says? John 6, starting 52. You don't partake it. You guessed it. Because the watchtower says you can't. How about the scripture? I don't remember where it's at. You all know it. Where it clearly states. I think it's in Matthew. Where it clearly states that no one knows when the end is coming. Not the angels. Not even Christ only the father but mom daddy dearest what was your thinking when you got married back in december of 1974 i'll tell you you both were so confident because you were an active jehovah's witness my mom was a regular pioneer a 17 year old minor that within less than one year of your marriage by october of 1975 that the new system was going to come and that Armageddon was going to come. You were so confident that by the time you turned 18, you'll be in the new system and all your children will be born into the new system. Has Armageddon come yet? I'm 42. I've been gone from the Wise Tower 15 years next month. So if you followed what the Bible says that no one knows when the end is coming, not the angels, not Jesus, only the Father, then that's that's going against what the what the Bible says with these predictions. You know, we all know Jehovah's Witnesses taught, or should I say Bible students taught, Armageddon was coming in 1914. We also know about the whole Judge Rutherford, their second leader bought a mansion in San Diego. They called it Besserum and said that Isaiah, Noah, Moses, all these biblical characters were all going to be resurrected. They were all going to roll in this mansion in San Diego. Oh, and Armageddon was going to be coming. So these are multiple dates when they predicted Armageddon was coming. But again, if you followed what the Bible said, then they're going against what the Bible says and they're religion couldn't bend the truth. 
You know, the last scripture I'm going to say to you is this. This is a scripture that I didn't know until recently, maybe about a year ago. And you know what, Mom? Look it up. Do it privately. Maybe when you're on a, or on a break at work and you're taking a nap on your bus, you're on a field trip, maybe doing a bus evacuation. Been there, done that. Go to Deuteronomy. And let me tell you, when I read you the scripture, this is going to prove to no doubt that there is no way the watchtower is the truth. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20 and 21. I don't have the Bible, but I will paraphrase it. It clearly states, and they use the word Jehovah. It clearly states, if someone prophesies in the name of Jehovah and it passes, basically it fails, then it is not the truth. They even use a scripture that they should be killed. What has the Jehovah's Witnesses done, continue to done? They still will do it. And you know, the, the pathetic part of it, all you use as scripture and proverbs, that the light keeps getting brighter. Oh yeah, we knew that the the West Tower used to teach us that Armageddon was coming in 1975, but it failed. But it's a new light. Now, I have a response to that. Interesting that you Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jehovah is unable to sin. You also teach, what the Bible does say it, that Jesus is also unable to sin. That means, if you really think about it, Jesus never told not a living soul that Armageddon was coming in 1874. Jehovah, Yahweh, never told you Bible students that Armageddon was coming in 1914. Jehovah's Witnesses, or should I say, God, again, never told Judd Rutherford that Armageddon was coming in 1925. And yet God or Jesus never told them that Armageddon was coming in 1941. And most importantly, God and Jesus never told any human being that Armageddon was coming in 1975. And you know what? One thing, I, I wasn't gonna, not going to bring this up, but I'm going to. So I, can, so I can get it all out of my system. Their horrible, evil, shunning policy. And I did a video recently about this. 19... 47 January the 8th it's entitled are you excommunicated look it up yourself it clearly states I'm going to bring up one comment about that that awake it clearly states that if that practicing of excommunication is pagan Interesting, only seven years later, in 1954, after you said it was pagan to practice excommunication, you changed your whole outlook, suddenly saying now it's no longer pagan, now it's biblical. 20 years later, 1974, that's three years before I was born, suddenly the Watchtower had another new light. Now saying, once again, their shunning policy, it's not biblical. Now, prior to 1954, it was all biblical. Then from 1974 to 1981, of course, I was born 1981, your wise tower once again changed back that it was biblical. So let's review it. 1947, January the 8th, awake. 
are you excommunicated? They clearly stated that practicing excommunication is a form of paganism or pagan. Starting in 1954, suddenly it was no longer pagan, it was biblical. Starting in 1974, suddenly it was no longer biblical. Then in 1981, until now, in 2019, you went back the old way. It was now biblical. Let's go back to that scripture. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20 and 21. When you proph prophesy something in the name of God, which I also like to say in the name of Jesus, and it fails, it is not the truth. So your religion failed miserably and there is no humane could ever be the truth so roll your eyes at me because I'm telling this right now all you do and mom I, I know this is hurting you or you're probably more mad at me I don't care how many times you keep trying to remind me saying that I am wrong to her associating with me despite that I'm openly gay despite I go to a gay church despite I hate the Watchtowers organization don't tell me that I'm wrong because all I'm going to do is look in your eyes and say you're the one who's, who's lying and it's interesting that all throughout the 1980s, 90s, until I left in 2004, all us Jehovah's Witnesses all over the world, we constantly had reminders over and over and over through your Watchtower literature, at your Sunday meetings, Thursday meetings, and your assemblies constant reminders that if you want to be loyal to Jehovah and loyal to the Watch Towers organization and live in this so-called paradise this Armageddon that's supposed to be coming any day now that you must avoid all communications who are disfellowshipped or disassociated or better yet from what I'm hearing the last couple of years you don't even need to be disfellowship or disassociated. If you just stop going to their meetings and stop kissing their asses to the watchtower, you'll still be shunned. So again, mom, why do you shun your daughter or your niece, Melanie? Why do you shun your, your niece's daughter, Alyssa? You don't shun me. It doesn't make sense. Just like your little... Oh, other younger son Benjamin when he was disfellowshipped you shunned him I know the only time you ever had any encounters with him is when you had to go pick up or drop off her grandchildren so stop trying to fool yourself and I'm telling you there will be a time I promise you this now there will be a time when you will get caught because remember this, Mommy Dearest, and I'm going to bring this up again too. Interesting, back at the end of 2016, when I ran into Brother Bill Madeley. Yeah, Mom, you know all about Bill Madeley. Joyce, you know, your, your parents were very close to our grandparents. Interesting, when I private messaged my brother on Facebook Messenger telling him that my brother, my Jehovah's Witness brother, is in cahoots with our disassociated cousin, Melanie, and they were Facebook friends. What do you think Brother Madeley said to me? You think he rolled his eyes and said, yeah, so? That's your relative? No! Brother Madeley told me, you need to contact a body of elders. Of course, he wouldn't respond to me. He wouldn't give me an answer other than, this discussion is over contact a body of elders. So, Mommy Darius, obviously, Brother Madeley didn't know that I was so far gone from the Watts Tower. Not the truth. 
Mom, just like I sent you in that little letter I just read to you, the truth is not the Watchtower. The truth is not JW.org. The truth is not even Yahweh. The truth is Jesus. Where again in the Bible does it say that JW.org or the Watchtower is the way, the truth, and the light? Where in the Bible does it say that Jehovah is the way, the truth, and the life, light? It doesn't. But the Bible does say that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the light. But you don't want to listen to me. That's why, like I said earlier in this video, because you know I could defend the truth of the Bible. And you know what? I know you're shaking your head. And you're saying, but Vic, there is six scriptures in the Bible where it clearly states you will not inherit Jehovah's kingdom if you're a homosexual. Okay. But do you know that the Bible says it in not six, but nine scriptures in the Bible that says it is detestable. An abomination in some Bibles if you eat shellfish or seafood with legs. What's your favorite at Red Lobster? All you can eat crab legs. So you're going against what the Bible says. Hmm, look in the scriptures in Leviticus where it also very clearly states it's an abomination. Detestable to God if you eat pork. Oh, yeah. And in Leviticus, it also says that it is an abomination or detestable to God to have fat, eat fat. Oh, yeah. You know what? I love it. It's an abomination, detestable to God if you have sex on your period. Hmm. So, again, it's not about what the Bible says. It's about what the Watchtower wants you to think. Again, if you're going to talk about the Bible, then you need to follow all what the Bible says. Not picking and choosing, because that's what Jehovah's Witnesses, and a lot of other religions too, I'm not just saying Jehovah's Witnesses, but they pick and they choose. So, I'm going to let this video end and I want you to think very carefully because I'm telling you this mom you will get caught sooner or later and you know what maybe brother Madeley said something to you maybe your elders in your congregation might say something but let me tell you it will hit hit you badly when the time comes and when it does and I can make it happen very easily when those elders come to you one day, when you're at your local kingdom hall, Woodland Park, Colorado, you think it's a normal day and all these loving brothers and sisters and my cousin Laura is there. And all of a sudden while you're chit-chatting, one of those loving elders are going to come to you one day. And they're going to go to you and say, Sister Hallquist, I was wondering if the elders and I can talk to you privately for a moment. And you're going to look at them and you're going to say, Oh, yes, brother so-and-so. Hold on. And you're going to go in there and you're going to say, Hi, how can I help you? It's going to bite you in the ass. And you know what? I want to say something too. One last thing. I forgot to mention this. And I'm pretty sure I have it in here. Let me find it. Hold on. Let, I found a really good, important thing I want to read to you. I think it's really important. Let me see if I can find it. Stand by. Hold on. I have a lot of photos on here. <laughs> Just forget, forgive me. I'm going to look for it real quick. Hold on. Almost there. 
Okay, hold on. Almost there. Okay, here we go. Now, I think this is the most important thing. This is going to prove how much of a liar you really are. So, J Mommy Dearest, I, don't, I know you don't know about this, so I'm going to tell you it. You know, Jehovah's Witness elders have a secret book. It's called The Shepherd of the Flock of God. Now, this book is intended for only elders. No Jehovah's Witnesses, especially sisters, are not allowed to touch this book. It's like one of their, it's like their private Bible. Now, you can look this up online. It's not that secret, like these Jehovah's Witness elders think. So in their 2019 revised Shepherding of the Flock of God book, on page 116, paragraph 6, and I want you to pay extra careful what it states. And it states, if members of the congregation are known to have undue association with disfellowshipped or disassociated relatives who are not in the household, elders should counsel and reason with those members of the congregation from the scriptures. Review with them information from the quote-unquote God's Love book, page 207 and 208. The Watchtower of April the 15th, 1988, page 26 through page 30. Or the article, Display Christian Loyalty When a Relative is Disfellowshipped. In the August year 2002, our Kingdom Ministry. If it is clear that the Christian, Jehovah's Witnesses, is violating the spirit of the disfellowshipping decree in this regard and does not respond to counsel, it may be that he would not qualify for congregation privileges, which requires ones to be exemplary. He or she would not be dealt with judicial unless there is a persistent spiritual association or he or she openly criticizing the disfellowshipping dis decision. Now, Mommy Dearest, Tina Marie Hulquist, have you having an ongoing a relationship with me despite that I'm disassociated? It said right in there. So, who should I listen to you? Should I listen to you where you continue to tell me that I'm wrong about you associating with me continuously all the years I left the Watchtower, continuously doing YouTube videos, degrading the Watchtower, which I do. I hate the religion. I hate the Watchtower. Or should I follow or they follow what the Shepherding of the Flock of God book says? Think about it. My brain is very clear. I take no medication. Oops, I'm wrong. When it's about 115 or hot or hotter, and I had a long day and the, the bus doesn't have a lot of good air conditioning. When I'm done, when I get home, I take a shower. I do get some headaches. I take Advil, maybe Tylenol. That's it. So I've been talking for almost 50 minutes. My point of this, why lie to me? It's the same thing with my little brother. All he does, no matter how much I could show him, he lies to me. 
And you know, the Bible clearly states in Proverbs that it is detested, bestable to lie. It even talks about a lying tongue. So you're going against the Bible once again by lying to my face. So I'm going to say this the last time and the one and only time. Mom, I miss you. I love you. Benjamin, I love you. I miss you. And you know, I'm going to bring it up my dad too because I know he shuns me. Dad, and I'm not talking about my stepdad. I'm talking to my real dad. Dad, I love you and I miss you. But I will not deal with this ever again. All you do is follow the Watchtower in JW Org. Watchtower in JW Org. You know that the the Watchtower could tell you Jehovah's is tomorrow and pick a date once again when Armageddon was coming and you would have to follow it. They could tell you tomorrow that you could once again, was your fifth time or your sixth time, saying that you can no, you can now associate with someone who disfellowshipped, disassociated, and you would do it. So how can you justify saying it's biblical? See, your religion makes no sense. And I will say this, I'm going to make this very G-rated. I know about the Australian Royal Commission, Jeffrey Jackson, one of your governing body members, who openly on in court saying when the lawyer asks him, so do your religion think that you're the one and only true religion? And you know what your governing body says? Well, that's presumptuous. He lied under oath to a judge and jury and a lawyer. 1,006 known pedophiles never reported to the police in the Australian Royal Commission. Disgusting. I could go on and on and on. How about the case in California? You know, the judge wanted to get some information about some child molestation. And they, they ref the watchtower refused to give it to them. So the judge said, okay, if you're not going to give it to us, you're going to have to pay $4,000 a day. And in the end, how much did the Watchtower have to cough out? They had to cough out over $2 million. 2019, less than a year ago, two ex-Jehovah's Witnesses were awarded $35 million dollars that the watcher had to give to them because they covered up the child molestation. The solution is simple. When there's a, any form of the case of abuse, you immediately call 911, call the police. But you have to follow that stupid, ridiculous 2000 biblical scripture of the two witness rule. Ridiculous. Think about it, Mom. Think about it, Dad. Think about it, Benjamin. And again, I don't care about you trying to justify about me being gay and what the Bible says. Because I want you to drill it in your head. There is nine scriptures in the Bible that says it is abomination, detestable to God, to eat shellfish with legs. That is three scriptures more than the scriptures referring to the homosexuals. And you think about homosexuals in the Bible? Until 1946, there was not one scripture in any Bible talking about homosexuality. That was added. And the Bible, which we all know, clearly states it is also detestable to add things subtract things or take away things from the original scriptures you Jehovah's Witnesses you added six scriptures about homosexuality so I'm done with this video I'm telling you right now I am in beyond peace 
Jesus is on my side. Yahweh is on my side. That's the end of it. And I'm telling you this, I've already said it. I will not, I repeat, will not ever contact you again if you're still following the Wast House organization. No. I'm not going to see how you're doing because because I now know you're the same old bitter person protecting the Wise Tower, protecting JW Org. And that's also a lie. You said in that long message that the jo J the Wise Tower and JW Org don't own me. They do own you. Let me tell you what would happen if you had the Blu-ray special edition of the 1988 Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. I know you love that movie. What would those elders do to you? What would happen if you all of a sudden smoked a cigarette? They would kick you out. Well, excuse me, there's no scripture in the Bible that says you can and cannot smoke cigarettes. Can, can or cannot watch R-rated movies. What happens if my stepdad, your husband, decided wearing a goatee or beard? They'll take all your privileges away. There's no scriptures in the Bible that say you can or cannot wear a beard or goatee. So I'm not going to go over an hour. So you worship the devil. The watchtower is the devil. Your religion is expired and it cannot be renewed. That's what your religion is. Expired. It's like when you get a ground beef and you put it in your refrigerator and it sits there for two weeks and you forget about it, all of a sudden you smell something funky and you go, oh shit, there's ground, there's rotten ground beef. It's expired. You can't use it. It's rotten. That's what the Wise Tower is. It is rotten and it cannot be done again. Okay. Love ya. Goodbye.